This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company, Sentinel One. I'm sitting down right now with Chris Bates, who is the principal architect at the company. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I got a lot of great questions here from our tech team, so you ready cool. to get started? Yeah, let's get going. All right. So first question, can you talk in detail about the architecture of your platform? How does it work? What kind of agents run on endpoints, et cetera? Mm -hmm. So it's really a fairly simple architecture. It is a SaaS, software as a service, but it can also be ran on-prem. Okay. It consists of basically a server, which is either ran on an Amazon instance or we can run in your data center and agents that are deployed on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Okay. Now, Linux is basically a, uh, all of them are, for the most part, lightweight platforms that allow us to do automation and prevention. So. Okay, got it. And now, uh, does an endpoint agent not have a significant overhead of running? On average, our endpoints consume under 1% CPU, okay. under 200 megs of disk space for the agent itself, hmm. and then around, um, I don't know, two to 300 megs of memory. So. Okay, not bad, not bad. Nope. And uh, now, if your agents are lightweight, how do you squeeze all of the machine learning intelligence into them exactly? So machine learning is often misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So what's baked into the agent is the actual output of the machine learning clusters that we do. So it's just the algorithms. Okay. So in this case, in the agent itself, there, there are basically two algorithms and, and a set of uh, logic rules that are baked into the agent. Mm -hmm. So the algorithms are, think of them as a big mathematical model with okay. a bunch of variables. And then what happens is as it's running, uh, features or processes are extracted compared to the models and the scores went rendered and that's what allows us to predict malicious. And then we also have a set of stack logic rules, mm. which are things that should never happen, like executing out of a recycle bin, things like that. Things that are just, when you see it, it's instantly bad. We mm -hmm. don't have to take any more CPU cycles. We can just convict. Okay, so. got it. And uh, now can you talk about what fileless malware is and how your platform detects it? So fileless malware is basically code that's introduced into the operating system to be executed that doesn't exist on disk before it happens. Mm, it normally okay. happens via exploits is a good example. They exploit an application which is already in memory to inject code into memory and then have it execute. So how we deal with that, Sentinel-1 was really designed from the ground up to deal with that mm -hmm. because we're a behavior-based engine. So okay. what you'll find out is no matter how the code is introduced to the box, whether it's via an exploit, a fileless attack, a script, or a file, mm -hmm. once it's on the box, it's a process and it has to execute within the confines of the operating system. There's only so many different calls it can make to write a file or to send a network connection. Right. Those are the types of things that our machine learning has modeled in context on behavior. Mm -hmm. So no matter what happens, as soon as something becomes malicious, we can detect it in real time ah. and then take action on it because we've forens forensically observed everything that's done up to that point. Okay. And uh, so now I know that many people in the security industry are afraid of ransomware and the devastation it causes. Mm -hmm. However, I know Sentinel-1 offers a ransomware warranty. Can you mm -hmm. talk more about that in detail for me and can you give an example of ransomware that was detected? So far, all of it. We've yeah, hey, that's warranty. great, that's great. Um, so ransomware is, is, is a unique set of family. It has some very unique characteristics that, that pretty much all ransomware does. It, so ransomware, and it starts, will do one of two things. Mm -hmm. Within a short period of time, it will, after, it will either go after the record on the system, like the volume shadow copy service, to disable that so you can't recover the files, or it will go after the master boot record so mm -hmm. you can encrypt that and you can't get, get in there. Those are both very interesting indicators. And if you look at and you map out like all the ransomware samples over time, there's four or five indicators that they all have no matter what. Okay. And so the behavior engine has basically been trained to look at those indicators. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's a new zero day. It doesn't matter if it's using, and they like, you know, want to cry using an NSA exploit to get to the system. Right. Once it's there, it's still ransomware. It's going to act like ransomware so we can detect it. Okay. And so the ransomware warranty is not only based on our ability to, to detect, but on Windows, it's also based on our ability to protect. So in this case, we use like the volume shadow copy service mm -hmm. as a source of truth. Uh, but what we do is we protect it. So okay. most ransomware, when it actually goes and tries to delete that, we tell it to not only ignore that command because we're a kernel level driver, but then we also use that as a form to convict that as ransomware. Okay. So. 
Um, and now I know another attack which is pretty difficult to detect lately is office documents with embedded mm -hmm. payloads. How do you detect these exactly? Again, it comes back into the behavior engine. So, so again, office documents and embedded payloads are scripts. Scripts right. have to be interpreted before you can figure out they're malicious. Sure. So there's two, two ways you can do it. Most companies right now just block all scripts unless you specifically ask mm -hmm. this one or that one to run, which which isn't really feasible to to maintain in an enterprise solution. True, yeah. So what we do is we've again we we've modeled the scripts and what they actually do when they become processes. So as an example, a script starts and does some some stuff that's benign to the system. We're going to let it run, but if it starts and tries to start exploiting the system, breaking out of privilege, mm. doing other malicious activities, that's when the behavior engine will model that as malicious, okay. convict it, and then again, since we have that forensic thing of everything it does, we can actually remediate or roll back ah. all the changes. Okay, so. got it, wonderful. So we don't, I mean, basically we don't deal with scripts, fireless attacks to us, uh, the same way we deal with everything else. It's all the same. It's all the same to us. Got it, okay. So. And now, can you talk more uh, about your auto immunization feature and how exactly it works? Yeah, so, so again, you always want to stop a threat as soon as possible, right? But there's a bunch of threats you can't stop pre-execution when they start because you can't detect them pre-execution. So auto autoimmune works is when we detect something for behavior on the first time, so it's something that it's went past all pre-execution and we've detected malicious as behavior, mm -hmm. thought on muon, we will actually then take that, that hash of that file and add that to a blacklist, which then will automatically block, block it pre-execution across your entire environment within about 60 seconds. Ah, okay. So basically, it, the first one was detected on execution. We still blocked the threat, right. but it'd be better if we stopped it pre-execution. Of course. So then we added to that blacklist. Ah, so then from then on at that point, got it. So it never Very executes cool. anymore. Okay. So, yep. And uh, can you also elaborate more on your single click rollback feature and how it works? Yeah, so so on execution, Sentinel One again is, is a platform and it's observing all behaviors on the box. So it's actually looking from the kernel inward from the user space inward and API calls, basically monitoring all behavior that happens, every process call, every file write, every file read, mm -hmm. and, and it's grouping processes in the context of what's happening. So then what happens is when we convict a process or a process tree as being malicious, mm -hmm. we know everything it has done. We know every file it's created, every file it's deleted, and every file okay. it's touched. So then what happens is the one-click rollback basically does two things. It actually does remediation, which goes through and anything that it was net new added to the disk as part of its malicious process is removed because okay. we forensically know what that is. Right. And number two, anything that was changed and or deleted is now recovered from that protected volume shadow copy service to a pre-breach state. Oh, okay. So. And now, would, would you say that that requires significant bookkeeping on the client's device to do that? No, because uh, uh, Volume Shadow Copy is already built into the client's device, mm. and it's part of the Microsoft operating system. Okay. And so all we do is orchestrate a built-in Microsoft tool, which is already there to do all that. We nice. basically protect it. We're looking at expanding that to Apple and Linux. The mm -hmm. problem is finding a... Mac has to come up with a journaling file system that, that is, has enough functionality for us to do that, and so ah, does gotcha. Linux. So as, those, as they make improvements, we keep on evaluating those systems. Nice. So, okay. Yeah. And uh, I know your deep visibility feature is interesting as well. How does it work when the traffic is encrypted, and are you hooking the APIs in, in the kernel to look at the data as it's sent and received? Yeah, so I'm part of Sentinel One as a platform. We already do those hooks, so that's part of that behavioral okay. engine that's doing all that monitoring, mm. and all that information is stored in a tamper-proof rolling container on the box. And so, as part of our preventative platform, we already have all of that information. Mm -hmm. All the visibility is doing is basically taking that information and streaming it up into a cloud to allow people to to do searches and and run queries on it. Okay. So, and then, yeah, for the encrypted traffic, we were, we we're basically hooking the stacks to pull the encrypted traffic off before it becomes encrypted. Uh -huh. And or using uh, browser plugins to, to extract it before it becomes encry okay. encrypted. Okay, so. got it. And uh, lastly, are there any you know, last or interesting things that you'd like to highlight about the company? I just think uh, I joined the company for Sentinel One. The reason I joined it is mm -hmm. I've been in the malware space, cybersecurity space, for 23 years. Nice, wow. And specifically... The, in order to solve mal malware, you have to get to behaviors because what's unique. So trying to do pre 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 execution screening like uh, other products do using machine learning, that's an infinite mathematical problem. You can never solve it because yeah. there's infinite variables and they keep on getting more and more complex. Whereas on execution is a model which is caged by the operating system itself. There's only mm -hmm. so many different ways the operating system can interact and do what it needs to do. Right. And so it's a it's a much more Define model. I can't say it's easier to solve, but it but it is solvable because mm -hmm. it is a constrained model. So I think the on execution for my hour days and all all the other days is the right approach. 
Sina One is the only company that's doing it right now. So mm. that's why I joined. Nice. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sitting down and speaking with me today. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. And that's all the time we have for today. So be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.